Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VentureTube. Come on. Who that? All right guys, the much anticipated video is here. I'm going to show you my personal modifications on my 2016 Hobie Pro Angler 14. A lot of you guys have been asking for this video and also a lot of you have been asking the differences between this one and my old version Hobie PA 14. So this may be a lengthy video but stay tuned, it's going to have some uh, great information. And I'm also going to talk about, again, the differences between my new one and the old one. Plus, the modifications I've done. And I'm going to walk through everything for all the new people that are uh, looking into kayaking and know nothing about the Pro Angler series. So, check this out. Okay, so here's the boat fully rigged out. I don't have all my rods in there, but... This is pretty much what it would look like on a tournament day. Well first I'll start off by saying I have my kayak sitting on a Harbor Freight uh, John Boat trailer. That's the original one I had for my other boat. Still the original tires. And they still got tons of tread on them. And I pull this thing down the highway. It, uh, I've had it up to 80 miles per hour for sustained times and no problemos. So if you're looking for a way to haul your Pro Angler cheaply check out the harbor freight trailers i also have a video on that trailer build as well okay starting at the front of the kayak here this is basically the same as the older one nothing changed they changed the emblem here uh, this is my solar charge panel it's foldable i use it for charging my cell phones and camera batteries on the water it's very handy it is not a 12 volt charger so it will not charge my my depth finder batteries but very useful on the front of your Hobie PA 14s you have a nice large storage hatch in the front which you can use as a fish cooler it has this removable liner I use mine for drift socks and camera equipment toilet paper and rain gear here's a tip for you already Hobie owners on days when you're tired of paddling and it's windy open your hatch if you're going downwind and it acts like a pretty good sail and it'll assist in your paddle okay I'm gonna pull this tub out real quick and show you something that Hobie made a change to now inside this hatch when you remove the bin you can store your Mirage drive inside of there too one update that Hobie made was to these rod tubes. On my older generation Hobie, at the ends, they were, they were welded to a sharp point. And what was happening, they were cracking. Now Hobie has decided to put these round caps on the end of these tubes to prevent that. I don't know if you can see that, but the caps are round now. What was happening when I would stand and fish, water would come up out of this Mirage Drive well, come down here and get into the rod tube and leak all the way down the rod tube and I'd end up with water in the bottom of my kayak. But that's no longer an issue. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Hobie's H-Rail system. That's this guy right here. Hobie makes universal mounts, H-Rail mounts, where you can attach different accessories such as this little tackle box here are rod holders are flags which I'll go over in just a second what's unique about it is that they're fully adjustable you don't have to screw anything to your kayak and everything comes off easily and it moves just like so very convenient so if you want to move a rod holder from one side of the boat to your other, you can do so easily. And you can also remove it all together, just like that. It actually serves two purposes though. One being a spot to mount all your stuff, but two, you can see it runs from about a quarter from the front of the boat all the way down about a quarter from the back of the boat. So it adds a lot of rigidness to the boat. It's more rigid when you pick it up. That This serves as a support. It's really strong, really well made. And of course, what makes the Hobie so great to begin with is the Hobie Mirage Drive System. Now let's talk about it 
Of course, the Mirage Drive system drops directly down into this hole right here, and you just pedal, and it's easier than walking, and it's faster. Now, I will touch on this. This new Mirage Drive system is smoother than the older generation. I like it much better. Am I going any faster? Maybe, but not by much, but I am maintaining the same speed with less effort. I would demonstrate how to put this in the hole, but my trailer is keeping me from doing that. Let's go ahead and just talk about this Vantage seat. You can fish comfortably out of it all day long with no problems. However, my old seat on my old kayak, I found personally that it was more comfortable than this seat right here. I guess maybe because my older one was broken in, but this seat, it doesn't give very much. Um, I'm not saying it's not a comfortable seat. I like that it has all the adjustments. It has back adjustment, it has lumbar adjustment, and it has a high and low seating position. But for the most part, I don't. once I get it adjusted, I don't move it. Same with the other chair in my old PA. Once I had it adjusted, that was it. What I will say that I like about this chair is the storage underneath. You didn't have that on my older boat. I do like that about it. Um, one thing I don't like about it is that it does not scoot forward and aft. My old seat did, which you guys know I build the trolling motors. That helps to kind of trim out your boat. You can transition your weight forward or backwards and kind of, you know, trim out your kayak a little bit. But not that big of a deal, and I do like the storage underneath. I also like the fact that it has bars and it has, you know, this is a good spot to mount different accessories they make mesh bags you can hang right here to store extra gear one other notable thing i like about it is how easy and lightweight it is and it's so easy to remove just by taking this bungee here right off the clip pull this up and the whole chair can pop out really quick now, i'm not going to remove the whole thing but it comes out really quick and it's lightweight so when you're taking the chair out it's much easier to do than on my older model Okay, what else? Um, Hobie also upgraded the little storage bags. The older model had them as well, but these are a rubber, and they made them with a belly in it. The other ones were just flat, so when you put stuff in it, the top of it would stay open. These actually were created with a belly, and it's made out of rubber, so if you do uh, drop a bait or put a bait in there, the hooks won't get all caught up in the mesh material good idea okay while I'm on this side of the boat you can see right here that I have my paddle and my stakeout pole hooked into this guy right here these are not supposed to be used like this but it's how I like it it keeps my paddle out of the boat out of the way and my stakeout pole out of the way these are designed to be on the inside of this H rail to hold three rod butts that go down into here so your rod tips would go in here and your rod would be all the way back the rod butt would be resting on this guy right here just on the inside and you have one for each side of the boat three on that side three on this side however I do not use those rod tubes I transport my rods in the van and when I'm on the water I have them in the crate the floor is more smooth there's it has little indentions you can see here, but they're not nearly as deep as the other one, as my old model PA, which is great because it makes cleanup a lot easier and you don't get water just sitting back here. Uh, I like that feature. And on the front deck here, as opposed to my other one, this one kind of slopes forward. And I like the way that feels standing up when I'm fishing. Uh, only downside of that is water is always gathered right here in the front of my boat. And it's kind of already starting to stain it, but that's that's a minor gripe. It's the Hobie cup holder. This is a, a Hobie universal mount, and I just put a rail blazer mount on there with a rod holder for trolling or holding a net, whatever you want. Let's talk about my fish finder. I have the Hummingbird HD 999 side imaging sonar GPS unit. I got a good deal on this unit and I wanted to, I wanted something bigger uh, and I wanted something with side imaging. Uh, the only problem with that is the transducer that comes with this unit 
is far too large for the Lowrance Ready system on the bottom and with it having side imaging it wouldn't work in the Lowrance Ready system anyway. It has to have a clear shot from side to side. So here's a look at the transducer and a lot of you guys have been asking me how I mounted it. Well this was my solution. Now there is a better way to do this but this was what I had on hand and I built it myself. I have some wing nuts on a U-bolt. I just loosen them up and I rotate it down like so. And then I tighten the wing nuts back and there's my transducer. And this arm is pretty long. So when I'm sitting in the kayak, it's, it's in the water, you know, three, four inches probably. But when I stand up to fish in the front, it raises up the back of the kayak. And that's part of the reason I made this shaft here so long. So the transducer would still remain in the water even when I'm standing in the front. There's other ways of going about it, but like I said, this was the best way for me and it was pretty cheap. And I just ran the transducer cable. I drilled a hole right here in the back of my boat, put a Hobie plug there, very clean. You could also use a Hobie H-Rail Ram Ball kit and put a dog bone on there, put a Ram Ball on this, and then you could do the same thing. But like I said, this was cheap and it works. I mounted my power switch up here on the front for my fish finder and my battery is located in this hatch here. This hatch has a mesh pocket for storage and it also comes with this tray that will hold two Plano 3600 boxes. I take those out, I have my battery box in here. I'm running two 12 volt, nine amp hour batteries. It runs this guy all day just fine. And this hatch, that's another upgrade Hobie made. My old model, it had a raised hatch and you always had to keep your feet on either side of it. This flattens out your deck. You, you can actually stand on this. It's very sturdy and it gives your, gives your cockpit here a more open feel. I really like this. Okay, getting to the back of the boat here. This is my Hobie heavy duty cart. Just painted it black and put some tennis balls on there. Tennis balls just act like shock absorbers when you're towing it around. Works great. This is my little anchor setup. 50 feet of paracord wrapped around a crab float that I dremeled out with a three pound claw anchor. Works great. And here we come to the Hobie H crate system, which is something new that I just got. Only modifications I've made to it are these rod holders. I put one rod holder here, two here, and one on this side. What's nice about the Hobie H crate is it, it already has pre-drilled holes. So all you have to do is purchase you some rod holders and they will screw directly to the crate no problem. And I, I added these little bungees here to mine to act like a leash. So you put the rod in, I can take the bungee wrap it around now my rods not coming out works great and you can see some of my tackle I got one two three four five six seven eight Plano 3600 boxes a thing of fishing line and a larger Plano for my deep diver deep diving crankbaits and that's about all I bring if I can't catch fish with that I, I can't catch a fish period let's touch on the Hobie H crate some more this H crate has molded rod holders in the corners with built-in leashes. So you just pull this out right here, come on down, it's got this little recession here, pop it in, rod's not going anywhere. So every rod I put on this crate has its own leash. Very nice. It also comes with its own straps, so you don't have to worry about trying to figure out a way to strap it to your kayak. It comes with them, fits nice on the little Hobie pad eyes. Okay, and as far as Safety. I have a Yak Attack flag. I put rechargeable batteries in there. This is a stern light. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that light up, but it just did. This is also reflective. It's kind of built on a tent pole system. This whole thing breaks down and folds like so. And it fits 
in the flag. This flag is also a bag. It's a Velcro bag. So pretty cool. I have it on a Scotty base mounted on a Hobie Universal plate which is connected to the H-Rail system on the back. Also Hobie has incorporated the mounts for a anchor trolley. So all you have to do is buy the anchor trolley kit and it literally screws directly into the boat. There's no drilling. It's so simple. I'll show you. This is a new item for me too, this little tackle tray. I really like it. I keep my pliers here leashed with some weed eater string. That's a pretty cool project. If you guys are interested on how to make that, let me know and I'll show you. But um, yeah, it's a neat little tray. You can obviously put your pliers in there. You can hang hooks here. It's got these little bungee straps to hold the top tray in place. Those come off like that. And you can remove this tray for even more storage. You see I got glasses, sunblocks, scents, uh, tons of plastics when I'm going fishing throughout the day practicing I just chunk them in here to keep the boat kind of organized fish grips all that kind of stuff but I really like it I'm always using my marker buoy and it fits nice and snug right in the top of this tray I really like this addition so back to the H crate for a second this boat has so much storage you could literally get away without even having a crate back here to begin with you have storage underneath your seat you can strap down large Plano boxes or even the small ones you got storage here. If you purchase this product here, you could put uh, Planos in it. So you could easily get away without having a crate, but I'm so used to having, having one that I went ahead and got it, and I really do like it. This crate also incorporates the H-Rail system, so if I wanted to move my cup holder back here, I could easily do so. If I wanted to move this rod holder to the H-Crate, I could easily do so. If I wanted to move these to the H crate, I could do so. You guys, you guys get the picture. This is my camera boom setup. I have a video on it, so if you want more information on it, check it out. But I just have it mounted into a traditional rail mount Scotty. It's not designed for the H rail system, but it's what I had on hand and I made it work. So check out that video if you're interested in filming. What else? Okay. Another change that the 2016 Hobies made, actually they made the change before, but again I'm comparing this to my old kayak. They have a rudder tension control. That's what this guy is here. So on my old kayak, over time, uh, the rudder would seem to get some slack in it. Well now they have it where you can actually just rotate this dial here and tighten up that slack. Very convenient. They added a skeg. What is a skeg? I'll drop it down for you just like that what happens is this guy comes down what does that do well it does two things one it keeps you tracking incredibly straight you can literally literally pedal this kayak and you will track straight in windy conditions rough conditions it doesn't matter also it keeps you steady if you're in high winds and chop and you know how your boat gets to rock and when you drop that skeg it, it kind of locks the boat in it's kind of hard to describe unless you're sitting in the boat my older PA did not have that and it's a feature that I've really really uh, come to like on this side is your rudder release so you pull this it drops down and the rudder drops down in the back it's actually stowed up in the hole. I, I literally don't know if the rudder is larger on this boat versus the old one but I can tell you that this boat does turn sharp, turns very sharp and I like the option of having your rudder controls on both sides. You can have a handle here or you can mount one on the opposite side here. Very cool. If you're right handed or left handed you have the option either way. Some of you may have noticed earlier some of these strings coming out of the front of my H crate well I'll show you why I put them there. It's for this guy. A Braven or a Braven, I don't know how you pronounce it. Bluetooth speaker. This thing is really, really cool. I got it on sale at Target. That sounds funny. It's got good sound to it. It's got a port on the back where I can actually charge up my phone on the water. So really, really, really cool. It's 
got a little bat built-in battery indicator um, and it's water resistant not waterproof I'll show you how it goes in it's kind of hard to do with one hand but okay I couldn't do it one-handed but there you go that's how it fits nice and sturdy is not going anywhere and on those days when I'm not catching fish I turn on some tunes and kayak and I also like the option to be able to charge my phone if for some reason I didn't have my solar panel or my uh, external camera battery okay guys I think I have went through the whole kayak I'm sure I'm probably forgetting a few things but you get the idea of the Hobie Pro Angler 14 the 2016 model now let's talk about this one versus my old one for those who are looking for a kayak in particular the Hobie is this one worth the money versus let's say a good deal on the older Hobie absolutely they have really listened to customers and they have fixed every problem if you could call it that with the older model Hobie is a great company they they make great products quality products and they've really done a great job of listening to their customer base with that said if I were to come across a good deal on an old kayak with the older seat I mean and it's you know, doesn't obviously leak or you know have major issues I would jump all over it it's still a great kayak you can live without having a skeg the other seat was fantastic for me some of you may disagree I loved it I didn't have the H-rail system on my other kayak I had to drill into mounting plates but it wasn't that big of a deal I mean once once you buy a Hobie everyone becomes an engineer some of you guys might be disappointed with my walkthrough because I really haven't done that many do-it-yourself things but that's what's so great about the new Hobie is that it's kind of ready to go right out of the box you, you can buy a few accessories they attach quickly and you can get out on the water and you're done it kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit but at the same time it makes things so much more simple and I like simple again guys I think that about wraps this one up if you guys have any questions regarding this Hobie or my old Hobie or any questions whatsoever leave them in the comment section below or shoot me an email find me on Facebook www.facebook.com backslash venture tube or shoot me an email through my website www.venturetube.net I love talking to you guys about kayaking. I love answering your questions. And thank you guys so much for the motor sales. I'm selling them like hotcakes, baby. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the modification video. And I hope you guys get your Hobie. Come on.